Welcome to part three of our 6502 single board computer for beginners. In part one, if you remember, if you've already looked at it, we had the design. Um, part two, we covered the construction, obviously the construction doing it on a vero board and our wiring techniques we use for this. And in this part three, we're going to be testing the finished product and having a few words about the programming with it. Uh, so this is the, the board as we can see. Um, it's pretty obvious what it is. It's using the the system here with the wiring combs. Um, we have finished making this and if anybody actually was watching very closely during the construction you'd realise we actually swapped a couple of ICs around here because when I started wiring them up for the demonstration I was actually taking it to the wrong one. So um, fortunately I spotted that. So I'm being honest, aren't I? You'll see that these actually are the other way round. Um, not much anything else to say about this at all. There's nothing new. This is what it should have looked like when we when we finished. Uh, so here the only point to make is that there's no display. So I made a socket for the display. And also there's no RAM. The reason why there's no RAM is because we want to just basically check the thing works um, with as few components as possible. Unfortunately we need all these to work. Um, but for this test, we could use a display, uh, but we, we don't need the RAM. Now, the very first test, if we take a look at the um, test program, you see here, this is what it consists of. It's quite straightforward. We're simply loading in a value into the accumulator, putting it out to display, loading in the next one, putting it out to display, loading in the next one, putting it out to display, then jumping back to the beginning and starting all over again. Here we have our board with its power on it, there's plus 5 and 0 volts on the other side. We're going to do our tests now with a logic probe. Um, anybody who's watched my channel before probably seen the same logic probe which we use. Um, it has three states in case you're not familiar with it. If the light, is, well it's four states actually. If the light is, is dim, that means it's a bad level, it's an in-between level. If the light goes out, it's a, it's a 0 volts. And if it goes bright, it's a 5 volts. And the last um, state is if the light flashes on and off fast, then that means that it's picking up a clocking signal, which can be run up into the, the megahertz level. So you just it flashes at the same rate, but it's very useful. It's a pulse stretcher, basically. So let's have a look. What I'll do is I will zoom in now on this IC here, because this is our decoder IC. And from this, we have the outputs for the RAM, the ROM, the display, the I.O. and everything else. This is a very useful, simple program, the one we're going to use, because, as you've seen, it simply does nothing other than address the display that would normally be in this socket. And that's it. It does nothing else. So therefore, if we look at the outputs on the 138 decoder here, there are currently three connected up, if you remember the, the circuit. the um, Obviously, the, the ROM is connected up. The RAM is also connected up, but there's no RAM here at the moment. And the... Um, Q1 output is taken to the display. So if we check those things, we should know what's supposed to be happening and we can work out whether it's right or not. So first and foremost, if we look at pin 7, you can see the probe is flashing, which means there is a clock there. It's not a high or a low. It's actually a clocking signal, which is correct because it shows that the processor is accessing the ROM here. Okay, so if we now go to the, the rest of the pins along here, that one is pin, sorry, you can't see that, can you? That's that's pin 9. You notice that the probe goes bright, which means there's a high on it and nothing else. It's high on that one as well. High on that one. High on that one. High on that one. But that one is clocking. Now that's pin 14, and pin 14 is Q1, which is going to display. So what we've proved so far is that there are two clocking signals. One is going to the RAM, spec button, the ROM, and the other is going to display. Now if we go to 15, 15 is the next one, it's a high. So you can just see, it's just a high. And the high means that there is the RAM is not being accessed. 
So the only only two things that are being exited at the moment is this one, which is our display, and seven, which is on the bottom, which is our ROM. And that shows that the processor is running correctly and is accessing the display, it's accessing the ROM, but it's not accessing the RAM. I would say that that circuit's working correctly. The only thing we haven't checked, of course, is the actual speed at which the crystal oscillator is working at through its divider. Whilst we're pretty sure that the processor is running correctly, as we have a display, it seems a pity not to put it in and see it working. Now I usually do these things when put, you know, the number of the processor or whatever it is in there. So let's put the um, power on. And yeah, it's a bit different this time. I thought that that makes a bit of a change. So it's simply saying hi. So that's it. That's as far as we can do testing it. That appears to be working correctly. So what I'll do now is put the RAM in the socket and we'll run a second program um, and just see how different that is. So I'll show you the program. Right, if you look at it, yes, there's a, there's a second part to it. On the right hand side is actually the delay subroutine, which is some... Um, the uh, bit which obviously we're adding to make it have a delay in between changing characters. What we do is we simply change the characters in the left hand digit in the display and just run through all the characters that display is capable of showing. The top bit is LDX with FF. This is we are putting the value in the stack pointer. Now you have to remember that the 6502 has a very small stack because it's running right at the bottom of the memory. So that's what we're putting FF from because the stack runs from 0100 to 01 FF. That's all there is. You can't change that because it's the it's hardware written into it. Unlike things like 6809, 6800, the Z80, you can set it where you want. You can't with 6502. It's always down there right at the bottom of the memory. So there you go. Now what we're doing is we're putting um, a 21 into A um, and then we're sending that out to... Um, 2003. 2003 is the left hand display where the H was with the high and what we do is we're going to change that. The 21 is an ASCII number so 21 is where it starts as an exclamation mark and then it'll simply increment as you can see it says go sub a delay we go you have a delay then we add 1 to A then put A in back into 2003 again which means it now changes a digit to something else jump back, do the delay, add one, etc, etc, so it will keep looping forever. What we've done is we've changed the EEPROM in here, we've also put a RAM in it, and we're now running the next program, that's the one which I just showed you, um, and in a minute it should come up on the display. Now, the display is running through all the digits that aren't there at the moment, because it's simply it's incrementing, and then it goes back to the beginning again, and off we go. And these, as you can see, are all the display digits you can have with one of these displays. Quite interesting, actually, really. It gives one idea of what, what you can actually do with it. But uh, that's it. That's all we can do with this as it stands, but it shows that everything's working correctly. Well, I hope that anybody interested in making their own microprocessor-based projects has found this interesting. We tried to cover all the aspects of building it. Um, on the board and also doing some very simple programming to make it work at the end of the day. I shall put up the um, circuit diagram and the, um, pro the two program sheets at the end which you can take screenshots of if you're interested. Uh, thanks for watching.